Hey, so I'm Monique, and this is my nutritional supplement presentation on omega-3 fatty acids. One of the main reasons the body needs omega-3 is because it's a key building block of the cell membrane for a variety of animals and functional organisms. So what is an omega-3 fatty acid? Well, it has a the name of the omega-3 because it has three carbons before the double bond in the chain, which repeats itself throughout the chain, which makes it an omega-3. Um, it's also considered a polyunsaturated fat, and it's abbreviated as PUFA for short. Fatty acids can be used as energy storage molecules. Glycerol and triglycerides that are stored in the adipose tissue, there are three fatty acid chains attached to a glycerol backbone that uh, synthesis occurs in the liver. And the human body can replicate some of the fatty acids, such as the DHA and EPA, but the body can only uh, duplicate carbon to carbon double bonds on the ninth carbon for methyl and, um, end of a fatty acid. But the only way to have the appropriate levels of intake is from ingestion. ALA is a linoleic acid considered an essential fatty acid, again, because it must be ingested. Um, and fish oils is the main source of these omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. It is known as a PUFA for short, and the explanation of why it's a PUFA is listed below. So the omega-3 fatty acid has a multitude of body functions and mechanisms, and is important to the muscles um, because beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria of the muscles. So some of the other applications of omega th fatty acids in the body is that it aids in insulin resistance. It's important for brain development and also shows an anti-inflammatory actions in the body. So as I stated before, the omega-3 um, helps the building blocks of your cell membranes. Um, and it is the phospholipid layer, which is a, um, a lipid bilayer. Um, that protects the cell. Um, DHA population is specifically seen in the retina, brain, and in sperm in men. Omega-3 is used in probably most of the infant formulas that are out there. It's essential for brain and eye development, improved vision and cognitive function. Although there is some dispute as to whether or not DHA is or should be used because it comes from a certain particular algae, which is what the pharmaceutical companies extract the DHA for baby formula. So the anti-inflammatory um, properties of omega-3 are being investigated, and this is some explanation as to why it is that omega-3 reduces inflammation in different mechanisms in the body. Um, again, it's been used in the development of cancer, uh, cancer research, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, irritable bowel disease, cardiovascular problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I talked about DHA being used in baby formula, and it's also a high concentration in fish oils. But there's two of these that are essential fatty acids because your body can only produce very small amounts of them. So the DHA and the EPA, your body can produce very small amounts or get from um, uh, some from chicken and uh, beef, but the highest concentration is going to be in your fish oils. So omega-3s, uh, the ALA, EPA, and DHA, um, humans can obtain from plants and animals, uh, things like beef and chicken. Your body can get some of the EPA and DHA, but it's got the highest levels in fish oils. Omega-3 and omega-6 are not to be interchangeable with each other. In fact, um, omega-6 can actually cause some inflammation and omega-3 alleviates that inflammation. So omega-6 needs to be in much smaller levels. Again, that's something that you consult with your doctor about. Um, here, these are other examples of where you can get your omega-3 uh, concentrations best in mackerel, salmon, and cod liver oil, sardines have the highest amount, and in the 
plants, flaxseed, soybean, chia seeds, walnuts, and canola oil also have omega-3. It's also important to note that as far as canola oil goes, it's only effective if it has not been cooked. Um, otherwise, the oils actually become hydrogenized and you lose the health benefits of that oil. Now, the omega-3 fatty acid can be considered a medication. It's considered a medication because it's regulated by the FDA in certain forms. There are two particular forms that are regulated by the FDA, and the indication is usually for hypolipidemia. Um, the mechanism of action lowers the triglycerides. It's believed to by um, preventing transcription in the uh, lipogenic gene and uh, by suppressing that gene uh, expression um, that it prevents the liver from secreting more triglycerides. Now, there are adverse effects of omega-3 fatty acids, so it's important to be under a doctor's care. Um, it does have properties that can thin the blood, so the doctor must monitor while taking this medication. Now, this is a slide that just summarizes how the omega-3 lowers your triglycerides and prevents synthesis. Now, this is a chart of how the omega-3 and PUFAs help with these different issues, neuroinflammation, oxidative stress, neurotransmission system, neural and synoptic plasticity. So currently, the FDA has proved the use of two prescription omega-3 fatty acids products um, Icosepin ethyl and omega-3 acid ethyl esters. The omega-3 fatty acid in this context is considered a medication for hypolipidemia, again, because it's regulated by the FDA. And the problem with OTC supplements, again, is that the um, concentration is not regulated. Now, this I copied from an information fact sheet about the actual medication that is one of the omega-3 fatty acids that's prescribed. Um, it's called Lovansa, and um, it is a combination of ethyl esters of omega-3 fatty acids. Um, it says the dosage is four grams a day, and patients should be advised to swallow with capsules whole, don't break open, don't crush, don't chew. So, well, all of these things are regulated much differently. And um, this is the chart from, um, from the medication. Uh, this is another chart of the other medication, Vesipa. Um, it is an ether aquapistothenoic acid, EEPA, um, sold under the brand name of Vesipa. Um, I had copied this from the FDA regulations and the citations are listed underneath if you want more information on this particular medication. The multitude of clinical applications for omega-3, um, some of this is still being researched and this is the list from the National Institute of Health. Cardiovascular disease, hyperlipidemia, type 2 diabetes, cancers, Alzheimer's, depression, visual and neurological brain development, maternal health, conditions, benefits during prebiotics, heart failure, intervertebral disc degeneration, attention deficit disorder, maternal depression, menopause, night sweats, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, periodontal disease, epilepsy, diabetic retinopathy, efficacy, tolerability, and side effects from chemotherapy, premenstrual syndrome, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. As further research continues, uh, two very destructive degenerative disorders, it's MS and ALS, and there's a lot of research being done about how the omega-3 fatty acids can help to preserve the, um, the myelin from degenerating in multiple sclerosis. And there's also a two-part study going on to understand how the omega-3 fatty acids um, can protect the lungs. Um, they're also looking into how this can help with um, ALS, uh, the degenerative muscular disorder. And that's all I've got for this presentation. Thank you.